So I'd like to introduce our team members for the project. First we have... I am Josh Curtell. I'm Tyler Hardaway. And I'm Michael Porter. We are students at the Pennsylvania State University, the University Park Campus. We are senior electrical engineering students eager to make a difference using upcoming technologies in green design. For this project, we're using the Freescale Demo QE128 board with the MC51QE128 microcontroller. The board gives us all of the ports for the peripherals we need for sampling our analog sensors, timing the code, and external connections for SPI. The microprocessor integrates all of our peripherals and handles communication between them. Without the Freescale part, this, difficult process, this project would be much more difficult. We began by brainstorming for this project on how we can utilize the Freescale part to design a solution for the problem of a low power solar radiation data logger. And we want to analyze the viability of alternative energy in various locales. Uh, suitable components for each requirement were researched and purchased individually and tested. We decided on several key ideas for the project, which include a pyranometer sensor, an amplifier, a 12 bit analog to digital converter, a boost converter. 1 gigabyte SD memory card and a Bluetooth transceiver. Each of these components allowed us to achieve the project goals that we were trying to accomplish. In the process of creating the final solution, we tested each component individually and finally integrated them into the final working prototype you've seen on the video. All right, to use our device, it's pretty simple. All you need are two C batteries to get it going. This will last it for six months whenever you place it out in the field. Uh, let's take a look at the components here before we go into how you use the device. We have a power supply, which has a boost regulator to give us our 3.3 volts for all our devices we're using. We have, of course, the microcontroller freescale part, which is the demo QE128 board and 30 bit processor. And we have our Bluetooth adapter, which we use to transmit the signal wirelessly so they can be uh, interpreted later on LabVIEW computing the computer. So to use the device, it's very simple. All you really need to do is to connect the batteries and it will automatically start running the code and recording data. The sensor must be placed level on a location that has plenty of access to the sunlight or you know, nice and level for wherever you need to locate the device. And then from there, you can transmit the data to LabVIEW whenever you want to. We have it set up for real time in order to see the data being transmitted. And the GUI is very simple to use. It has, uh, just press the start button and it will start recording data. Uh, set to the initial time in order for it to timestamp the data correctly for its data samples to come in at once per minute. And then you will see the data output on the sensor as you are seeing now on the screen. After clicking the, the Save Data button on the LabVIEW GUI, and you will have a data file saved in an Excel format, which you can use to examine your data and analyze it for whatever purpose you need it for. You have a column for the month, the day, year, the time, and which is every minute, the data sample. Uh, and we have the data itself in millivolts, the solar radiation data. To conclude our presentation, we would like to say that the device provides an affordable solution to researching the viability of alternative energy sources in multiple remote locations. The project will benefit directly the Penn State Solar Decathlon team, researchers, and alternative energy community projects. We believe alternative renewable energy is the key to the future of our environment and our lifestyles and we believe green designs allow economical solutions to global problems of energy dependence.